afternoon, Mr. President. Hello. I'd like you to meet the Hi, how are you? Kevin, it's nice to see you. Nice to see you. Oh, nice. <laughs> well, now, thank you very much. Oh, yes. This is a pleasure to meet you. Thank you for having us. This is my husband, Mr. Well, <laughs> Baseball Hall of Fame. He was a very great baseball pitcher. And Grover Cleveland Alexander uh, had epilepsy. And he went to the top of his great moment that has never been equal. It was in the World Series with the Cardinals playing against the New York Yankees. He had won two of the six games of the series, which was highly unusual for a pitcher. And then in the seventh game, which they needed to win the series, and being tied up three and three with the Yankees. In the seventh inning, with the bases loaded and no one out, the Cardinal pitcher developed a blister on his finger. And Rogers Hornsby sent for Grover Cleveland Alexander, who had pitched the day before and gotten the greatest ovation anyone's ever received for winning that game to tie up the series. And he had to come out in that spot, bases loaded, seventh inning. And Rogers Hornsby said, well, what do you think? And Grover looked around the bases with three men on them, and he said, well, there doesn't seem to be any room for him on base. <laughs> <laughs> so he struck him out, and he won the seventh game for the Mad World Series going in there. At that moment, getting and I played in that picture. There's one thing they didn't put in the picture, uh, and I always regretted it very much. When Grover walked the long walk from the bullpen out to the mound, knowing the spot that he was going in, he was facing one of the most dangerous hitters in baseball, who was also and epilepsy, and the two knew it about each other. The others didn't know it. But uh, he had a great pitching record. He was also a war hero in World War I, he had lead baseball. If I, if I may, one more, 
Well, that's Kevin right. would very much like if you would light the candle of understanding. You look like an older boy, Kevin. <laughs> Do I look like that? No. <laughs> red hair. The red hair. It's a dead Unintended, we're, we're unfortunately we're uh, imitating your administration. In one respect, this book project here has a big deficit, mm -hmm. <laughs> but we're still proud of the product. And uh, I'd like to present our historian Jim Free to give you your book. Well, well, I'll tell you if you if you will help us get our deficit reducing plan, in action, <laughs> we'll help you with you. I hope we can do a little better. Mr. President, the chapter on years. Title Pros Amongst the Amateurs. <laughs> and they have uh, well, uh, a picture here, but uh, we put nicely. Well, 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 yes. <laughs> that was even, you know, that even caught me, but I didn't know that yeah, sequel was even kept from me. Yeah. 
I thought you'd gone to the powder room. That was a <laughs> very deep secret. Uh, yes. The 17 presidents, Mr. Mr. President, who attended the Good Island Dinners, you are among the very top flight and you're relishing the give and take and the thrust and power of the Good Island Club and uh, breaking with the two Roosevelt's and Jack Kennedy. Well, <laughs> thank you very much. <laughs> well, I'm very pleased to, to have this. Thank you. He's got mm -hmm. another book for well, you. This, also. Is, this is for uh, Nancy Reagan. All right. Yeah, yeah, except the volume for her. Both autographed. Well, appropriate sentiments. Uh, well, thank you very much. <laughs> She'll well, be very you. pleased, and uh, particularly with that photo in there. And mm -hmm. as to all you amateurs, if I could just, uh, there's a fellow named Spencer Tracy that had a, a good <laughs> lesson in acting. Well, he went to young people in Hollywood, which was learn your lines and don't bump into the furniture. Those <laughs> <laughs> couldn't have a show if they did that. For example, this, I appreciate if you'd just sign one if it, uh, James Free here or somewhere. That's one. And you put a lot of hours on that. That's right. About a year. Yeah. Is this for you? Uh, yes, it's for me. For James, right. James, James Free, yes. FYWE. The author of the book. <laughs> thank you very much. Right. Appreciate yeah. it, sir. All right. Well, thank you. Thank, thank you, you, sir. Thank you. We'll look forward to the next part. Good. Okay. Good. Yeah. Actually, March. As the vice president, I hope you'll be there. <laughs> <laughs> That's not of automatic <laughs> And as the producer of the skit you appeared in and your wife appeared in, thank you. <laughs> <laughs> well, all right, just, just don't uh, schedule it on, say, like November 18th or 19th. No, no. <laughs> we're going to be doing something. I'm sure. <laughs> <laughs> we'll see you. Right. Thank you for receiving. Thank you. Thank you, thank you very much. Hello there. Hi, Mr. Dagnall. How are you? Hi, how are you? Mr. President. Well, well, I'm pleased to see you here. My wife, my yes. son. Hello. Hello. How are you? Nice to you. I was at a speaking engagement yesterday, Mr. President, for 600, mm -hmm. or 500, 680 Pratt & Whitney aircraft employees, or retirees. And I spoke there with 55 of my flags on display. And you got an unanimous vote of confidence from all of them. And I told them about the hostages and heard that the airplane that you uh, made sure didn't get away. I got a standing ovation, believe me. And I said, when I said, sir, I apologize. It was unanimous. Hell no. So you got a lot of support back well, home in Connecticut. Let's move over here with this background and get a picture. And why don't you get in the, here between this and the middle? Always makes a prettier picture that way. Come on, get in here. All right. I still think when we have those ceremonies out on the lawn, I think that you're probably watching. I'm looking out of the corner of my eye to see whether I'm going to do this or not. I'm still watching. <laughs> because I figured it's, that's our flag, and that's a very precious flag. Yeah. And today I was just presented with the uh, a paralyzed Veterans of America flag this afternoon at 2 o'clock well, here in Washington. And that's another one that's going to fly with dignity and honor. Well, and I hope you see them someday. Now, all the other times, I salute when I don't have a head of state with me. I can do it myself. And sometimes I do it this way. Yes. Even though it's not uniform. The, just a little souvenir. This is a bookmark, just a souvenir that. Presidential oh, seal. Beautiful. Thank you. And same seal cufflinks. Oh, beautiful. Beautiful. Thank you. Thank Very you, nice sir. Well, thank you. Good this, to see you. This is a day I'll live in my heart forever, believe me. Well. I just want to say to you, I gave the gentleman over here a letter from a Polish immigrant that works with me that expressed his feelings for you and, and, what, and America uh, and that you were doing a wonderful job. Uh -huh. and he wrote you a little note, and he would like you to give him a little note back so he can write home to his parents in Poland that he had a letter from you. Well, I should that the address is on there. Yes, so yes, his address and right. everything is there. He's been in America three years, and he feels like tall people in Poland, even an immigrant. 
can come to America and get a note from the President of the United States. And that might call a big raising for them. Wow. All right. We need all the friends we can get. <laughs> and everybody I work with says, you're doing a great job. I say hello. I appreciate meeting you. It's very, very honored. Well, a great pleasure for me to have you here. Thank you. Good to see you. I wish they'd change the law so I could run for you another term. <laughs> really? <laughs> well, really, you're doing a tremendous job, sir. Well, I don't think they could do that for me, but I'll tell you something, since I've been here, um, not for myself, I think that constitutional amendment was a mistake. If we've got a democracy, the people have got a right to vote for whoever they want to for as many times as they want That's to vote. Right. Definitely. And, uh, I agree with that. Because, you know, it all started, it was simply, a, it became a tradition when George Washington only ran for the second time. But back then, they were so conscious that they did not want this new country to ever take on the aspect of royalty. Mm -hmm. So he did that and started that tradition in those early days. And uh, I didn't always feel this way, but the more I've thought about it, and uh, just said last night, a little affair good night or goodbye to a senator who's retiring after 36 years, as a senator, well, why shouldn't the people? They did it for Roosevelt, and and that the people wanted to, and it was their right to do it. But if they changed you. Wouldn't have no problem. But this, is, this is the last <laughs> term for me. <laughs> You've done a fantastic job, sir. Thank you, and thank, thank you. you for the invitation. I thought you forgot all about me. No, no. <laughs> I think about you every time I stand up there. And <laughs> <laughs> all right. Thank you, thank you sir. So